I said this weeks ago about the movie industry is that it hasn't caught up to it, the counterpart of the music industry. Like I could make an album, you and I could make an album tonight in in on a computer. And we might. And we, we drink enough of this. Bro. We might. Okay. <laughs> you break out the guitar. We have all of the and we have we have everything. I don't have to go to a record label for distribution. Mm -hmm. I can go directly to Apple and say, I want to put my album on here, just like we do with our podcast. We put it on every platform and it's there. Right. So why is the movie industry so different? 66? 66. Wow. And we are drinking Ben Holiday from Missouri. It's a, a straight bourbon whiskey bottled in bond under U.S. government supervision. Jay was telling us this bottle is like, I mean, well, the distilling process is very uh, old school, like on the side, it's kind of like the... I think basically what he was just saying is that it's a very old distiller uh, and that it's from Missouri. There aren't tons of uh, distillers in Missouri and uh, these guys go back quite a ways. That's my understanding. Uh, it has a date of 1856 here on the bottle. There's really uh, very little uh, notes on the bottle as it relates to the distillery. There are... Uh, there's some information about the bottle specifically, which uh, warehouse it was stored in, which That's floor dope. it was stored on, etc. But not the uh, not the normal kind of boilerplate pitch uh, that well, you like would flavor have. Flavor notes and all yeah, that nonsense. For, yeah, for, yeah. for a bourbon. But it looks fun. It was highly recommended. We're going to... Oh, distillery site since 1856. Yeah, so there we go. It does say on the bottle, on the front of it. Um, cool. So we'll get into it. I've never had anything from Missouri. This is definitely... <laughs> I've never had anything from Missouri. Well, I've never had any bourbon from Missouri. I don't uh, think I've had I don't, anything from Missouri ever in my life. I'm not sure. Maybe they... Is there a big... Uh, is, there a, is there a product that comes from Missouri... Can we look it up? Can we search and see? Is there like a major export from Missouri? Do they have like corn or is there a, this might not be an easy thing I think to find like, out. I try to think like pop culture wise. Is there something wise, that they do? The only person that I know out of Missouri. It's got a screw top on it. Ew. Which really. That's not our show aesthetic. Off guard, yeah. dude. No pop this week. That's not our show aesthetic. It's okay though, because I like something a little different. Mm. I'm here for it. Now this is a hundred proof, so it's probably going to be. I wish I hadn't noticed that before I bought it. You typically go for a lower proof. I do. I, I feel uh, like you get more flavor notes out of a lower proof. Sure. It's not as... Obviously, this goes without saying. This looks it's like a It's not as bootleggers. assertive. It generally is a little easier to take in some of the flavor profiles, if you will. All right. If we want to just pause this conversation about the whiskey. No, uh, Isaiah's here and he's live drafting for me for my Bring Beer League. Shout out to those guys. Who's up? What I got? All right. Your, the highest draft pick available is Walker from Seattle. Kenneth Walker. Oh, yeah. Take Kenneth. Take him. Take yeah, him take Kenneth. him. Let's go try and go wide receiver next. Right, but this... Uh, Appreciate you. This is like, um, like the screw top reminds me of like, I don't know, like you see it in a movie, like somebody's like at the bar just drinking. Yes. Yeah. Like this, that with the screw top. Reminds Here's me. what I can appreciate about the screw top. <clears throat> and this is 100% theory. What's up? But I'm guessing that the screw top is less expensive. Oh, I so absolutely it's would cheaper. think so. Bottle price, the manufacturing of whiskey bottles, I would guess, is a significant portion of the whiskey price, the retail price, when everything is said and done. Because there, are, a lot of bottles are really dramatic, uh, super heavy, That's odd shapes, big like you know, uh, corks, tops on them, etc. So this makes me feel as if maybe they're putting more money into the product rather than the packaging, which it could be very a good odd style. design too. Because this is a sticker, but the bottle has the the distilling distilling number. Is that what you would call that? Yeah, yeah. on it. Sure. So like this bottle was. I don't know if this. I don't know how this is done. Like this is. Well, they obviously are ordering the bottles with the numbers, like. You know, yeah, baked in and per then what warehouse it's in, and then they there. put they slap a label on it. Yeah, I would think if you were 
they may only have like maybe there's only one warehouse. Oh, okay. And it's just called warehouse number five. <laughs> it's not to say that there's yeah, like too, right? 15 warehouses. There could yeah. be. I don't know. We are See, this says DSP MO5 warehouse C. Sure. I don't know what that means, but. None of us do. This we'd, says we'd DS, to, DSP. We'd have to talk to the boys. Maybe we can get somebody. From the distillery. Yeah. Um, any major exports out of Missouri? Were we able to track uh, that down? Soybeans, corn. Soybeans. Feed, pork. All right. Soybean well, soybeans meal. and, yeah, soybeans and corn. It's probably, it's likely we've had something soybeans? from Missouri. Yeah. As long as you get like, well, soy sauce. Soybeans. <laughs> you get like tofu. Ah. Tofu. Ah. But okay. corn, I mean, that's a corn. major product. Yeah. yeah. So they've got a couple things coming Seems out of Seems likely there. we've got some Missouri corn. Nelly. Nelly, yeah. It's not a total loss, man. Yeah. Nelly, St. Lunatics, Country Grammar. All right, <clears throat> first item up on the agenda. <laughs> Let me look. <laughs> first item on the agenda because McDonald's makes one of their restaurants look like a nineteen look like nineteen eighty two. Oh, in honor of Loki. Did you see that? I did not see this. Look really cool. I also you, there's photos of this. Yeah. All right, so this is. Let's talk about that. And okay. then we're going to talk about the show notes that I wrote that never populated. On the oh, phone. so this is old stuff that These I These are old notes. This is from last week's show. But tell me more about this. We are fumbling Where through. is the McDonald's that has all of these things? And Isaiah. is it accessible? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. He's don't know. got too much going on. You have saddled See, him with fantasy football All right, well, I can, I can draft. Fantasy football I can work. draft. He's researching Missouri. I can draft. All right, research, research Loki. There's a Loki McDonald's somewhere And I can do world. two things at once. I don't know if you can. Absolutely. I've been having this issue, though, where my notes are not updating. It's but a little so frustrating. My wife and I share a grocery list. Yes. And, like, I'll call her and get mad. Like, you didn't update the list. And I'm in the store. Yes. And she's like, I, you know, I effing did it. Blah, blah. And then, like, I'll, like, all right, whatever. I'll refer. And then it'll, like, populate, like, five minutes later. of Like, everything that she had. I don't know what the delay is about. I don't, I don't get and. I, Notes is like the only app in the Apple ecosystem that does that nonsense, mm. where it just doesn't. Weather does that. <laughs> Weather. <laughs> Weather Weather just doesn't work. Weather. Period. But um, I saw this on ComicBook.com. And about, talk to me about the renovations that they've done. Is this like top they, down? Like they repaint it? Top, or is the this entire just, thing. They made it look like it was 1982 down to yeah. the down to the prices. Okay. Like, uh, did you see the Loki trailer? Right. Yeah. And you saw the part where. Loki sees Sylvie in. She's working in the McDonald's. Yes, it's that McDonald's. There, uh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So it's like 1980. Where is this located? Where is that? Located? And I'm assuming you this can is, go to it. Yes, you can. This McDonald's is in. <laughs> Stay with me, guys. We with you. Loading. All right. Loading. <laughs> this McDonald's Loading. is in. What do you know? Brooklyn, New York. Oh, so this is relatively this accessible. Close. If you wanted to go, you could go. It's not like far and away. No. Nah. Okay. Very good. I didn't taste this yet. Yes. Get a sip of that. I'm going to check my notes on my computer. See if I can get them to sync. Because I wrote full. It's very full. Kind of tastes like a rye. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's very uh, it's hot. How's your how's your computer holding up? It's holding up great, man. Can't complain at all. Get that battery replaced? No. Been too busy. Mm. iPhone season. Yeah, man. This might be the year for a new phone for me. Yeah, it's listen. Next week, so they say. I don't talk about people's struggles. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna call it a struggle. No, you can call call it what it is. It's time for you to upgrade, bro. Yeah, man. That's a, <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm wondering if it's an issue with the shared note. Because you're sharing it with, it's my fault. No, I mean, it's <laughs> shared with everybody, I think. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. And I just got it. I think everyone's it, it in. Just, it just I think popular. everyone's in on it. Yeah, I just got like, I just, you heard I that. I created, just got it. Yeah, I just created a new note for myself, mm-hmm. copied it over. And it showed up on my phone and in the private note that I have, but my shared note still hasn't updated. 
Oh, that's strange. No, because um, mine just mine popped. Mine didn't, and I'm you on your Wi-Fi. Here. As am I. And it's Episode McDonald's. Episode sixty six. <laughs> you're you're way outdated. All right, so maybe it's something to do with the shared note. That could be it. Whatever, we'll fumble through. I don't care. And I think I just deleted the whole note, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh shit. Um. Oh great! Here we go. Here it is. We live. Do you have the episode sixty six notes? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. great. We're uh, now we're cooking with gas, what, yeah, dude. <laughs> but why, like, you can't like pull down and refresh? You know what I'm saying? I I don't know, man. This is a great question. I don't have the so answer stupid. to it though. All right, man. All right, so let's so, get rolling on episode sixty six notes. There it is. Man. Just hit me because that'll there we be go. good. First note on the list. First thing in news: Pirates of the Caribbean reboot. Well, Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean reboot gets green light with Craig Mason. Yes. It was Craig Mason. The showrunner and creator of The Last of Us TV show. Oh, oh yeah. That's why the name sounds familiar. Yes. Okay. Are we going to go? He did a Chernobyl as well on HBO. Which I that series. So Awesome. Yeah. So he was a Chernobyl guy and then obviously The Last of Us, but he recently came out and said that uh, he had a pitch, a script and a pitch for the Pirates of the Caribbean reboot. And that he presented that to Disney shortly before the strikes took off and that they approved it and greenlit it uh, prior to the strikes taking place. So really very little work has been done on it beyond that, but that is confirmation that there is a future to Pirates of the Caribbean. No word on whether or not uh, our boy Johnny Depp will return. I think he'll be back. I don't know, man. Well, they're saying it's a reboot, right? So yeah, I don't but you know could that, reboot it and still have him in it. You could do a soft, like a soft launch of a new series, like yes, a new correct. series of movies. You that could keep is a him reboot. in it, keep hit the character in it, but reboot with the people around him. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm just do something that. different. You wouldn't have to bring back Orlando Bloom's character as somebody else, but like Let's you could tell a new, you could do Orlando a new Bloom. trilogy or something. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually very outspoken. He would love to come back to the Pirates I think so. series. He's said it many times. Hmm. It for whatever reason, Pirates of the Caribbean gets a lot of. I guess, re- reoccurring press on whether or not there will be more of them. Like it's oftentimes talked about. I, so, all right. And everybody that's in it always is commenting, or that was in it, is always commenting on the future of it, like Orlando Bloom, for example. Talk to me. Like, let's talk about Pirates of the Caribbean for a second. Where does, is, does, is, is, is it based on a book? Or is this an question. original story? Like, well, you know it is I mean? a, so or it's a Disney ride. Um, it is a ride. Yes. But is it... But the question is, is the ride based off of a book? So the I, movie is based off of the ride. Right. And we know Jack Sparrow is like a, is a the tale of a pi- uh, actual based pirate. Based off of a book. I don't know. Huh. Isaiah could look this up. Is there a Pirates of the Caribbean book that predates... Where are the, the references for all of the stories? Ride. Because, I mean, nothing is original anymore. So like this had to have come from some. My understanding is that the ride is what is just the influenced ride. the movies. Uh, hmm. I've never heard of source material predating the ride. Doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I mean, there's obviously like Treasure Island, and there's plenty of ah, books. There you go. That are pirate themed that would predate the ride, but I'm not sure that there was a book or a uh, like. There's not a Pirates of the Caribbean like animated series or anything before the ride ever occurred. Hmm. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean is simply based on various pirate legends and the ride. Okay. Okay. There you go. So there's no source material necessarily before the ride. Nothing that's like complete. Block. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting for them to be able to build like such a, like a, it's kind of Avatar-esque for them to be able to build like a franchise like that. I think it was a shot in the dark. Truthfully. yeah, Yeah. I think they never anticipated it to do so well. And you have somebody as eclectic as uh, Johnny Depp, who's very much on par of like a Robert Downey or yes. Leo right. DiCaprio. Like somebody you can you can put the weight of a franchise on and be like, look, we're taking a shot in the dark and your star power is what's going to bring people out. So yes. like, dude, please don't. F this up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, it's all fair. Yeah. It's all very true. He did do a great job. He carried that franchise for a long time. It would it's be just, and then we had a shame to see without him. The, 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 um, the talks of like rebooting it with like mm-hmm. Margot Robbie. 
Yeah, my understanding is that that is still something that had been discussed as of very recently. Um, Jerry Bruckheimer had said that there were two different concepts for Pirates of the Caribbean that they were pursuing and that they did not know which one was going to get made first, but one did involve a reboot of a lot of the core characters and kind of making it more of a... I don't want to like misquote him, but I think it was going to be like a, a female led pirates kind of crew, if you will. And maybe Margot Robbie was either going to be taking over. It was going to be Jack Sparrow or maybe a descendant of Jack Sparrow or something. Some type of, but there was an idea of like, you know how they did like all females ghostbusters. Yeah. I think it was something in that vein. I don't want to misquote anybody, but my understanding is that, they were contemplating doing something like that. I could see that. it. I could see it. Um, she did the uh, Birds of Prey mm-hmm. with Harley Quinn. Oh, and she's she's definitely qualified yeah, she's, for the job. Qualified. I think she could do yeah. a great job as a Jack she Sparrow. I would probably, if I had my pick, I would rather have her and Johnny Depp probably do something together. Yeah. Maybe Or maybe even he like passes off like the mantle I to her even a little bit. Mind the like the formulaic story of like this needs to be done, but the only person that really can help me is is Jack Sparrow. So she has to like yeah. find seek him out, rescue him from whatever mm-hmm. fucking prison yeah. he's in, and yeah. then it turns into a buddy cop thing, and then they yes. go on their adventure. I mean, that could be fun. That could be fun. I like that. Right. Idea. Um, I think their energy would work off of each other. Great, uh, and. One more tidbit. Like, I didn't realize that Margot was so was still so young. She's only 33. Mm-hmm. So in, in in retrospect to, like, the other stuff that she's done, it's like, yo, she was really putting on bangers when she was in her 20s. Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street, mm-hmm. Harley Quinn. Uh, what else did she do? Uh, she did, a, you know, just, like, her high profile, the Suicide Squad. She was yeah. she was knocking them out of the park when she's like twenty five, really twenty six years old. Like that's crazy. She really was. And Barbie is obviously and put then, her on and the now map Barbie in the is, biggest way. Yeah, like her shining star of achievement. Like, yeah, and it's kind of like a Johnny Depp thing. Like Johnny Depp had a lot of movies when he was younger that were yeah, yeah, yeah. really big heaters. He wasn't like a superstar right out of the mm-hmm. gate, but had a lot of really solid, you know, uh, yeah. movies under his belt, and then became obviously this megastar. Which is kind of the track that Margot Robbie is on to a certain extent. Yeah, I feel like she's going to be one of those um, uh, long-standing stars like uh, Kate Blanchett. It'll be interesting what direction she goes with from here on out. Like, does she keep trying to go after that? Do you chase the, you know, do you chase the next rung on the ladder or do you like chill I think she'll get into, because, you know, this happens. Like, stars end up like... They do all of the stuff that makes them money. And then they go into like, all right, I'm going to do like my directorial debut. And, mm-hmm. then, and then from there, from there goes into like their passion project. She can kind of disappear a little bit maybe. Then they go into the indie stuff. And then by the time she's like 45, she'll come back out mm, and do like a freaking Marvel thing that'll like put maybe. her back in the $100 million box office. Maybe. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just the natural matriculation of like. Hollywood. I mean, I feel like there are some actors or actresses, though, that kind of try to continue to push it and go even further. Like, I feel like Chris Pratt was somebody that did that. I don't think it worked out too well for him. Like, I think he hit stardom. Like, I think he really got, like, super well known. And yeah. I think he kept trying to do blockbuster after blockbuster after blockbuster. Well, you gotta milk it, man. And I think a lot of those f- did not do well. So I feel yeah. like he's kind of lost a little... I don't like Chris Pratt, but I feel like he's lost a little bit of his credibility, a little bit of his steam. He's had way too many like kind of clunkers. He's in, had in clunk- contrast yeah. to like the, the the heaters, you know. Yeah, and then you look at like I don't I don't know. I guess it's tough too because being a um, a Marvel front man, right? You look at all of those guys. It's been really. I won't say it's been tough, but it's been. I would say from a viewer's perspective, challenging to see them outside of those mm. uh, heavy, those heavy roles, right? Yeah. Like yeah. we see Chris, he's Star-Lord, 
right? We see Robin Downey, he's Iron Man. Like, so when we look at him in other movies, we're like, this ain't, this ain't Iron Man. So yeah, I, I feel like that can be, I, I would say yes, for the most part. I do feel like the first time I saw Robert Downey, though, in you gotta, you gotta Oppenheimer, I felt as if he was, like, I didn't see him as Iron Man in that. In Oppenheimer? Yeah. Well, it's also been some time. You know what I'm he, saying? I mean, they do. He looks a lot older in Oppenheimer, but <laughs> I, I mean that's intentional. They tried to like make him look older. But he is he? Is, is I mean he's him? older. Is he sixty? But he's not. Is they made him look a lot older in? Oh Oppenheimer. yeah, because the character he's playing. So when yeah. you see, but like in Iron Man, they were always trying to make him look young. So they I feel were. like yeah, yeah. You know, they're they always trying to like de-age him. So yeah. when you see him in Oppenheimer, you kind of feel like, oh man. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean, to his counterparts. Uh, you know, where Chris Pratt, Liam Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, I'm sorry, is that Liam is his brother. But what has he done since? Chris? Chris. Evans? Yeah. Pratt. Which one? No, Chris. Evans? Evans. Absolutely nothing. That's what I'm saying. But he's not even tried to get into I don't the- I think he kind of really wants to like let that Marvel ship sail away before he comes back did, did he do like has he even acted in anything else other than that Whoa. was he gray man no that's ryan reynolds no, that's, that's ryan reynolds, ryan reynolds. Er, did he do because okay so chris has got who was ryan gosling was something he was gray man was it that ryan wasn't gosling? ryan reynolds that was ryan gosling. ryan gosling was gray man yeah uh yeah that was ryan gosling so chris has done Oh, he did the um the, the Apple TV show, the Apple TV movie, where he was uh he was uh trying to date that chick, and it had all of the Avengers like pop up in the movie as other assassins. Anthony Mackie was in it. Um, oh, Ghosted, yeah, Ghosted, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't so know. he was also in Didn't the Gray it. Man. He was in the Gray Man, right? Yeah. Was he the lead? He wasn't the lead though, right? No, he was the villain. He was the yes. head. He was the villain. Okay, so he wasn't Gray Man. Oh Ryan God. Gosling was. I the never villain. saw both either of those. Bro, go watch Gray Man. Gray Man is good, bro. And good. also, uh, he was in Lightyear. The oh. voice. Yeah, the, voice. the voice. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that was a banger though. Yeah. I mean, it was. It's also an animated thing. It's not like he's had like any big yeah, knock out of the park. It's not like his. I guess his saying. face. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's fair. All right, we'll move it on to the next thing. What's the next nice. thing? David Fincher's The Killer gets mixed reactions. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you a David Fincher guy? Am I? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What else have you done? Gone Girl. Uh, yes. He I, did Dragon Tattoo. Seven. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I'm with it. Yes. Absolutely. Memento. Memento. Zodiac. I've seen all of these. Yeah. yeah. Zodiac. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think he'd do a really good Batman movie. Oh, and he also did uh, Mindhunter. <clears throat> Yeah, so Fight Club. That's where the name Fight sticks Club? out. Yeah. That's where the name All sticks right. out. So yeah. he has kind of seemingly jumped ship a little bit from like the studios. He's been working with Netflix um, ever since Gone Girl was like the last thing that he did that was studio related outside of like a Netflix thing. Then he did a, went, jumped over, did Mindhunter with Netflix. He did um, Love, Death, Robots. The, that series, uh, he did uh, Mank. Mank was with Netflix. Um, but The Killer is his first movie that's kind of traditional in the sense of, you know, a lot of those other things that he had been doing. So since Gone Girl, this is like a more traditional theatrical kind of thing. I think it is actually going to get a release in theaters. Um, but it's a big, I think it was a big investment for Netflix. I think they were really hoping that this was going to turn out pretty solid. It's coming out, I want to say, in November, so it's kind of gearing up for award season. Mm -hmm. Like, it's right in that stretch of time where you get a lot of that stuff. But apparently the uh, reactions have been a little uh, mixed, not so great. The trailer for it recently came out. The trailer was fine, not super exciting, I don't think. It looked very Fincher, very David Fincher, (laughs) but... He has a particular style. 100%. He's super stylized. Oh, uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. That was also David Fincher. Um, but yeah, I just didn't know if you'd been tracking with that movie at all. I have um, kept an eye on it, know. but, uh, I feel like Netflix is also in a weird spot where they have not had too many huge successes. I think Netflix has just kind of been a, an amalgam of like 
all types of content. I feel like they do content. It's like it's good enough. Like whatever yeah. sticks at the wall. They're like, all right, we'll. But have know. they had any movies that have really been like standout? Have they had any like major award winning? Really, mm-hmm. they've had shows. They've done well, like with the their Emmys. show stuff has been great. Their movies, but have, have been have like they gotten? Can very we look up? Has Netflix gotten any Oscars for, mov- for, for, for anything, movies? For any movies, like you know, have they pulled an Oscar for? I anything? think like we just watched again. Uh, Hitman's Bodyguard's Wife. Like, their movie list is very... What's the word I'm looking for? It's very uh, safe. They make it a movie with some star power that's going to, like... People will watch because it's Netflix. Like, these, the the executives at Netflix have a very great... uh, A very great guise of who they are. Right? We are the app that's going to give you content that you're going to watch when you're chilling. Mm-hmm. Then they have taken Netflix and chill and really made it the, the, the structural backbone of like how they put out content, yeah, right? Yeah, With yeah. their shows, it's like, look, we got to just put out some dope like stuff to binge and our movies are safe for two and a half hours. People can watch two hours at the most where people can watch if they fall asleep, whatever, they'll t- turn it back on in the morning. Yeah. But we're not trying to like hit home runs. 100%. We're, we're, this is the budget. If it does much better, fine. If not, fuck it. They've got That's to what be, I feel like Netflix They've got to be a little focused though on trying to get some award winning content, I would think. I'm sorry, you can't do this. Yeah, no. And people um, are probably watching like, what the, f- I, I got a, my fantasy draft going and. Well, the main problem is that your phone is locking. I don't know why you didn't just take it off. All right, well, this one I can't. I should have did it on that one. Sorry. Okay. Um, I don't care anymore. It's like seventh round after auto pick, whatever. Yeah. So uh, it's football season. So we should, we, if anything, we should all be excited. No, we all football, are. So about it's your football draft. season. Not about my draft. It's just football season in general. The draft just happened to fall on the, the time that I have to do this here. Sure. And this is like my most expensive draft. Like the one, like I pay the most to be in. Okay. So now I'm gonna have to like really do some GMing on the back end because that's this takes precedence. I yeah. was trying. I can't do both. It's, okay. it's fine. They'll be okay. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. they'll be okay. But, uh, Netflix's Oscar-winning movies: The Irishman, Moonlight, Okay, La La Land. Uh, Wait, Netflix made La La Land? I looked up Netflix. <laughs> He's like, I looked Oscar. up Netflix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, La La Land. Well, so this list is a little, uh, now that I get to thinking about it, but movies that I know for sure were made in a Netflix studio, The Irishman, and uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I know for a fact those two are Um, Netflix movies. Is the new Martin Scorsese movie, is that Netflix or is that Apple? Flowers under, Flowers of a Killing Moon or Under a Killing Moon. I've I've never heard that before. I'll look it it's, up. I think it's one of the streamers though has that. I'm I'm gonna say it's Apple. What's it called? Say it again. I think it's flowers. flowers. Is it flowers under a killing moon? Is that under. what it's called? I could be butchering that. Flowers under thirty dollars with free delivery. Flowers of a killing of a of, of killers a, of a flower moon. There we go. Of, oh man, that was way off. And that's an Apple TV movie. <laughs> I had the right words. Yeah. It you is did. Apple yeah. TV though, right? Apple TV. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there it is. Bada bing, bada boom. You did. And that'll probably, I would think, guess is that that'll probably smoke whatever Netflix has lined up for this holiday season. Yeah, this I think season. Netflix has definitely gone for the quantity over quality near model. Yeah. Yeah. Where Apple TV is. They're more interested in putting out a quality product. Absolutely. It's fair. Absolutely. I'm with that. All right. Next Next on the list. Adam Sandler receives criticism over casting his children in the latest movie. Oh, here we go. You have children. You tell us. Yeah, I'm trying to get my kids to check, bro. What the, first of all, first of all, first of all. There's a whole thing with nepotism. People, people have, have issues with that. I don't I don't think But do I you subscribe to whole, it? Yeah, my whole nipples out, bro. We're gonna get they're gonna kick us off YouTube, bro. I don't think that's how it works. It's not my nipples aren't like popular or but <laughs> first of all, nepotism, I have no problem with it. Okay. Right? Like I think if you are in a profession 
and you have the resources, the power, and the concentration to be able to show your 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 child or cousin, brother, or whoever the skill to to see that they have the skill and and to back it up with possibly the talent, mm. let alone be in an industry that I have been I've learned to navigate by all means. Like, I mean, I'm not calling myself like a podcast professional or whatever, but you know, I got my cousin right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, I just feel like, Oh, so you're the Nepo baby. <laughs> he's the Nepo. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I feel like by, I, by natural, uh, selection, you would probably select the person the closest to you to join you in your journey of create of creation. And that's usually person in your family. But because, does you that get saying? weird when it's a child? Nah, I, I would absolutely catch Because my they kids. are kind of underage. You're kind of putting them in a situation where, I don't know, fame does weird things to kids. It can. It can have lasting effects. Like you, you are, I don't know, like- it's weird. I think the I think the perspective is of how are you doing it? One, and then two is like what in in what dynamic are you doing it? Because like, look at Judd Apatow, his kids are in all of his movies. Yes, that's true. And I don't think he's ever gotten any flack for it. I mean, look. I don't know. He may have. I mean, he may have. He probably did at a certain point. I haven't heard anything. Uh, Look at Beyonce. Blue Ivy is out there. She's one of the lead dancers on on her tour. Mm -hmm. Every night. Uh, Freaking, I mean, there's the Hemsworth brothers. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. I don't think we're arguing that. I just, I guess, do you... As a father, would you say you see a concern? Like, are there any concerns you would have if you were in a position like that? Of Adam Of Sandler, taking yeah. an underage kid. And putting them in the forefront and putting of the movies. them, like, pushing them into fame. Even if they were like, yeah, this sounds great. You don't always know what is like, you don't always know what you want when you're nah, eight I years old. I don't think it's any different than having a family business. Yeah. That's I, fair. If I was a freaking... Plumber. I mean, son. fame does weird yeah. things to kids, but and I had a great. Whereas yeah, being, fame is like, different. Working in yeah. HVAC might not. <laughs> That's true, true. But I also think that you know, being an electrician is different than having everybody at Starbucks know your name. I would also, I would also argue that they have grown up with a certain amount of fame. Exactly. So they kind of know that they at this point. To be able to have the mental capacity to be mm-hmm. able to go to a set and perform, to know that what you're doing is under the perspective of other people, mm-hmm. right? I, I, I don't know Adam Sandler, but I would think he is the type of person to be able to to relay that type of message. Yeah, I don't think he's doing it like maliciously. No, no, no. no I have no, no problem with it. Yeah, I have, just to clarify, I have none, none. but I think it's, I think I th- it's great, man. I, I think you build your your next generation of yeah people who can one what it does right, like nepo babies who do it in a great way and respect the craft, do it with integrity, and they want to knock it out of the park. One, because they want to do it for themselves. And two, they want to make their family name like ring bells. Like I'm, sure. I'm all for that. There's probably a lot of a lot of Nepo babies though that do the that do the don't opposite. do that. Yeah, you got probably like, more of them that don't do that oh, than do that. Absolutely. You get like your Bronny Jameses and then you get your Hunter Bidens. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> sure. you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's all in like what if if you think that you you see this is what you grew up with and you're like you know what? I can do that. And I, I feel like I can do it because I have a, a talent that was handed down to me mm-hmm. from my mother, father, uncle, cousin, brother, or whatever. Yes. And then there are people who just like, that's not for me, bro. Like that, that's all good. And you know, they did that, but I want to make my own name doing something totally different. And if, you know, in, in Hunter Biden's case, if that's, you know, employing ladies of the night and buying guns, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and no, no disrespect to Hunter. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's just 
the that's just the the dynamic that you can you can see like there's I'm sure there are tons of other actor actresses children who are like I want absolutely nothing to do with that like no don't even ask me about reading a script or sure singing or like um was it Paris Jackson says she wants nothing to do with the stage yeah. but she wants to be an actress which is like I won't say like an inverse of, kind of the same thing. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of like she doesn't want to do music, but she wants to act. She's like, I don't want nothing to do with music, but I want to act. And she actually did fairly well in Atlanta when she had that 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 episode with um, mm-hmm. was it Atlanta? It was Atlanta, right? Yes. Yeah, it was in, in Atlanta. I didn't even know it was Paris Jackson until you know I went you know saw the credits. So it, it, it's just all in uh, it's all in perspective. It's all in dynamic, and it's all in how you want to be portrayed. It's fair. That's what I think. All like, right. I mean, I wish I was a Nepo baby, bro. Fuck off. There's still time, dude. <laughs> I don't, no. No, it's not. It's still over. Still time, dude. It's over, bro. You never know. You never know. <laughs> it, is, it is definitely over. You never over. know, man. Oh, man. Okay. Next thing on the list is Taylor, Swift, er, Taylor Swift's Erator concert film breaks AMC's record for pre-sale tickets with 26 million on its first day. Yeah. What is this? So Taylor Swift filmed her tour. Oh, yeah. okay. She and now she's Beyonce. putting it in theaters. That's not new. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think so it's a great idea. What is a little different about this? There is a couple of things, but one is it broke the record for pre-order sales. Yes, that's that's absolutely. So Spider-Man No Way Home out the window was, for a documentary basically. Was holding it. Yeah. But that was what had it. That got blown away. Because that's what this will be classified as, <clears throat> like a doc. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So here's what's different about this from a business perspective, kind of interesting. Um, Taylor Swift is not using any studios. She circumvented all of the studios. So she made a deal directly with AMC to distribute this. So she bought and paid for this 100% on her own. She owns it completely outright. And just she's called doing up, the, inst- the distribution herself. She called up That's AMC, genius. the CEO of AMC, and they negotiated a deal, the two of them. And then I guess with the theaters or whatever, I think some of the numbers are actually available online for what the splits were. Right. But this is like the first time that somebody has done that, where basically there's no studio involvement in the release. And then once it's done in the theaters, once the theater run is over, so how does she, she retains all the rights. So it's a hundred percent hers and she can then sell it to a streamer or she could sell it herself. Yeah. On I was her wondering like website how, or something. Would, how would she, who's going to be the, uh, the, who's, what company is going to interject to help distribute it, to help distribute this out to this, these massive, because all right, like, we work, I won't say what we do for our, our personal, like we know what it takes to do like file transfers and like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It'll like, just be, somebody is just going to pay top dollar for it. And I'm it's sure, going to be a streamer. It'll be, it'll probably be, if I had to guess, I'd guess Apple maybe. I could definitely see, definitely Somebody's going to fork over a ton of cash to own the streaming rights. What? A, a, a Taylor Swift music doc on Apple TV? Netflix, Absolutely. Netflix bro. owned her last one. So she nah. did a, she did her, her last tour, her last big tour that she did. She distributed all of that through Netflix. Um, I can't remember the name of the documentary, but <laughs> and that if, all went through Netflix. If there's any executive that I could see at the Taylor Swift show, it's Tim Cook. <laughs> Maybe. Absolutely. Be. He's absolutely at a Taylor Swift show. Dolled up to the nines. To the nines. Dude. To the <laughs> nines, bro. He's not Beyonce. Taylor <clears throat> Swift. So I think that there's a 13 week exclusive run with AMC um, where it basically is a split, pretty much, give or take a few percentage points, but basically between the theaters and then the Swift, like, then, you know, Swift. Um, and then once that's over, she can then do whatever she wants with it. That's dope. To I think I, I applaud whatever. her for that. I think it's an awesome idea. But it does set a precedent. Can other people do that? There's a lot more money in it for the theaters and for the 
And for AMC, there's yeah. way more cash. So here's yeah. the split. If you can do that. You got the split. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's so, it's online. I read it earlier. I just didn't want to. So forty three percent of the gross is going to AMC directly. <sighs> That's crazy. Uh and then the re- the other fifty seven percent is split between Taylor and a little bit more is going through AMC through some sub distributors like uh Variance Films who are gonna book Regal and Cinemark and other smaller theaters. But it sounds like the majority of that 57% yeah. is going to go to Taylor. Which is a pretty wild thing. Yeah. They're saying that it's going to net $100 million the first weekend is what they're guessing. I would absolutely so that believe means, so. Yeah. Like she'll pull $50 million. That's not the big part that's the crazy thing. I guess it's more about the precedent that it sets. Because technically, if you were a wealthy person, you could finance your own movies and you could just skip you studio don't have distribution to do- altogether. You I'm, could maintain ownership, go directly to a theater, and well, just distribute I said it directly. This, I said this weeks ago about the movie industry is that it hasn't caught up to it, the counterpart of the music industry. Like I could make an album, you and I could make an album tonight in in on a computer. And we might. And we, we drink enough of this. Bro. We might. <laughs> you bring out the guitar. We have all of the and we have we have everything. I don't have to go to a record label for distribution. Mm-hmm. I can go directly to Apple and say, I want to put my album on here, just like we do with our podcast. We put it on every platform and it's there, right? So why is the movie industry so different, right? There's only one one uh, transactional element in it, and it's the theaters. Why can't I just go to a theater and put my movie in a theater, right? I, I I don't I don't know. I don't work in the movie industry. I don't understand. But like, I mean, you personally could like right. you could rent a theater and play whatever you play, want, right? But the idea of the theater acting as like your distributor rather than the studios mm-hmm. is an interesting idea. Yeah. Because traditionally, you know, your studio is going to help fund but own essentially. The movie. They're gonna pay for and then all of they the They have deals stuff. with the theaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're the ones that kind of help, you know, yeah, tr- transition the, all of that. The theaters buy from the now let's let's yeah. let, let's backtrack a second, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say I don't want to go into theaters. I want my movie to be streamed directly. What why do I need a distributor? Why can I go to Netflix? Why can I go to Apple TV? Why can I go to Disney and say, <clears throat> look, I just I just want to put my movie out? You, you know, like, can with uh, yeah. iTunes, like I think you could put your movie or your content, I mean, with limits, you could distribute it through the iTunes store. Yes. I don't know about streaming. Like I don't think – like Netflix doesn't have a program for that. I don't think Apple does either. And I know but I know as like an independent producer, if you've made a movie, you could put it on iTunes. I'm saying all this to say – <clears throat> the movie industry has not caught up. And I know that there's so much red tape and there's so many people, you know, like that's why there are unions and SAG and what have you. Like mm-hmm. I made the comparison to movie, you know, music industry. Like I could literally make a one man movie, one man album that doesn't really involve anyone else. There's no unions or whatever. Yeah. Put it out in a stream, right? I do understand that there are standards that need to be met in order for, uh, a production of that caliber to be put out and mass massly distributed, whatever. But I'm going to argue that I don't need to meet those standards if I just want to just, I could shoot a movie on my iPhone. Yeah. I mean, then, you, you know could, what I'm saying? You like, could do that on YouTube. I, I could do, why, why can I do like, okay, perfect example, right? I shoot a, a dope movie. Mm-hmm. Dope. I get, you Robert could, Downey Jr. You could sell it on YouTube. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. does me a favor. Yeah, because I blackmailed him. Sure. And now I shoot a f- a feature a future feature length future length film on my iPhone with mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. and I'm going to distribute it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. What's stopping me from just calling up Netflix and saying, "Yo, I got this movie." Like that's what that makes no sense to me. It makes absolutely no sense to me. If you work in the movie industry and you please hit me up and explain it to me, because generally you want to f- you want to like control the flow of consumption. So for example, if you're somebody who has 
a pretty big platform um, and you're going to release content, you might decide I'm going to release it on YouTube because I get better payouts from YouTube. The yeah, deal is better. Yeah, yeah. But if I put it on Netflix, I'm not going to get as much off it's of that. Whatever My deal distribution might be yeah, a little broker, bit bigger, yeah. but I'd rather bring more people over to YouTube because I'm going to get a better I'm gonna get share. More, I'm going to get better money out of that as opposed to like a wide distribution yeah. where – it's nice because it's available everywhere, but you may not get the best deal everywhere. So you're going to have to, you know, if everybody can watch something on Netflix, you're less likely to go to YouTube for it. Whereas like you're, True. you know, you might make more on YouTube or something. I don't know. There's hit, a lot of hit me up layers to that. And but. there are indie films on Netflix. So yeah, there, there are. So yeah, technically yeah. Swifties doc is an indie doc. It but absolutely the question yeah. is, the question is, could you make a movie and up? Could you make a movie and upload it to Netflix in some way without having an intermediary? I don't think that you necessarily could. Like, like I gotta have a studio. Somebody would. I some, mean, unless gate, somebody at gatekeeping. Netflix, unless somebody at Netflix would take your call. I just don't know how else you would get. I don't know how right? else you'd get. It's not like you can just upload it to their server. Like YouTube, anybody can log in and and they don't make it. You want. They don't make it so that you can do that. Like <clears throat> correct. They, there's an iTunes store. And to the, your point YouTube, about the streaming I thing with upload. music, you can make an album. You can <clears throat> upload it and stream it on Apple Music tonight. Yeah, right. Yeah. In, literally, in you know, I, I'm. But I can't do that for Netflix. There's no there's no platform like that. Except for, I mean, no paid for. I mean, I guess YouTube. You could put something on there and make somebody pay for it if you wanted to, but. Yeah. yeah. Well, it says here Netflix does not accept any unsolicited material. There you go. So it has to go through us. So it has to go sort. through a licensed agent, That's producer, yeah, attorney, agent, manager, or exactly. industry executive who, who already has a relationship with Netflix. Yeah, gatekeeping already has a relationship. They're gatekeeping. Yeah. They're gatekeeping so they don't have to change that industry, and that's part of what the strike is about as well. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, man. What's okay, next? so next, Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet make public debut. Bro, they was kissing. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, they was kissing, kissing. Nah, he was smoking a cigarette too. They, that's love, bro. That's love. You smoking a cigarette and you tonguing somebody now without brushing your teeth at, like after that cigarette or no gum? Or anything? This was young love. <laughs> that's young love, <laughs> baby. That's that, uh... that's that Towson strip love. That's that young love. Yeah, dude. We had the bar. Cigarettes never tasted better. Yo. Hey, listen, listen man. Y'all like it. I love it, man. I, I'm all for young people. I'm still young. I'm not that That was young. like their coming out party, though. They was, there was a lot was, of speculation yeah. about the two of them, but then they, they were at were. the Beyonce show. They were just sucking face in front of the paparazzi. No cares in the world. I wonder oh, how Travis man. Scott feels about that. Though. They were just showing the world. I wonder if he's... Because they're all like... Is that what happened with that? They split up, I guess. Eh? They just had like another kid, which makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't know. Young rich kids literally do whatever they want, bro. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you might as well. Only young ones. We so. only, yeah, man. I guess. I don't know. Only young ones. So you I guess might if as well I was. Do it. And then, I mean, I, I I don't really keep up with the. I'll say it at, at my age now. I don't really keep up with like the social media digest of like what's going on with like people. I more look at it for news. Sure. So like I saw this because it was on, a, on one of my news channels. Yeah, I saw this on news too. Uh, so it's kind of like how are these never mind. Nah, I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there. That's all right. It's all good. I won't go there. Well, all right. Don't go there, dude. Yeah. Just way to go, say, Timothy. Way, way to, to go, go bro. Locking in, bro. There you go, man. <clears throat> Smoking cigarettes at the Beyonce show. Yeah. At, I, I would have, yeah, at, at B show. He has to smoke cigarettes from here on out. It's, it's part of his look. Yeah. Yeah. He like has to do it. Yeah. And at concerts and public events only. It makes him look way cooler. Yeah. Because he's got kind of like the young face. It gives him an edge. Yeah, no, it, it does. It, he needs it. it he looks a little too like squirrely, like he just kind of like crawled out. Like you could like jump scare yeah. him. Yeah, he needs a little. <laughs> that that yeah. helps, like you know. Yeah, he looks like he stability. looks like he gets stuck up. Like helps. Put your hands stability. up, and he'd be like, "Oh no!" Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's smoking a cigarette. Yeah. You're not really running up on anybody smoking That's a right. cigarette. That's true. Yeah, That's true. 
If you cause that much damage to your lungs, who knows what you'll do to me? <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> you'll attack me if you'll kill yourself in the, in, at the same time. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Nah, Good man. for him. Good for Kylie. Congratulations. Nah, uh, theaters will re-release movies due to the strike. Would you go back for them? Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> well, what is, would you go back Yeah, for? so here is my question. So there's a lot of movies that are going to start coming back into the theaters. I've already seen oh, a, a couple of things like Maverick is coming back and they're, they're going to start re-releasing some stuff just because there's not going to be very many movies. Like they've pushed Dune and they're going to continue to probably push movies as well. I mean, I don't see the strike ending anytime soon. Um, what do you want to come back in theaters? What are you going to go see? Hmm. Like what would, what gets Courtney off the couch? <laughs> if anything, doesn't have to be anything. I'm just curious. I'm very interested in seeing the Dark Knight trilogy. Which is coming but back. But that is coming back. That is coming back. Uh, and you're not going to go see it? I want it on Blu-ray. I've seen- That's I, my point. What I would, literally- I know, but what's going to get you back into the theater? Uh, Lion King, the original, would get me back. Lion King? Yeah, the original. The original. Yeah, so I can take my kids to see the original. They won't watch it at home for whatever reason. But if I take them to the movies, it's an experience. So they'll probably get okay. it then. Uh I'm trying to think of like the classics that I saw that I never got to see in theaters. So like yeah. um, Friday. That, I, I, that was just thinking I'd that. probably go see Friday. Friday. Okay. <laughs> that would be fun. Like, you know. Worthy yeah, of the big screen. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think I never got to see. I was 11, 12. I never got to see that in the theaters. Okay. Uh, so Friday. Life. Um bunch of classics classic classic stuff um harlem nights yeah uh scarface um boomerang a lot of deep super deep cuts yeah boomerang uh i'm trying to think uh fight club if fight club if fight club goes back in the theaters tonight i'm going bro yeah absolutely uh all right <clears throat> Uh, Full Metal Jacket. Interesting list. I didn't see this coming. I'm yeah. Very honest. Put Full Metal Jacket back in theaters. I'm in there. It's I one. don't think they could put that back in theaters today. No, it was way too wild. Uh, and uh, uh, Dead Presidents. I'm thinking like the stuff I would rent I, like as a kid that I didn't get to see mm -hmm. in like belly. a theatrical belly, um, in a theatrical element because I was too, yeah. too young. I get that. So, um, yeah, man, my, that, that list, like my, my top 25 list is in my phone of movies. I could pull, I could pull that up and, and really like enter the dragon. Um, well, keep an eye out. Cause what I'm saying is I think some of these I things, I don't know. Yeah. Your list is pretty obscure. I don't think many of those are going to make the cut. I got super deep classics that are like, I'm guessing that they're going to do more like Avatar 1 and yeah. then Avatar 2. Yeah. I'd love to see The Godfather. I think it's going to be more Godfather like Trilogy. Lord of the Good Rings. Good yeah, 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 yeah. Godfather, you could probably pull off. Reservoir they probably Dogs. already play that periodically. Somewhere. In theaters. Somewhere, yeah. Goodfellas. I'd definitely go see Goodfellas. Yeah. There was, when I lived down in Florida for school, there was at, I lived near Universal, <laughs> and there was a theater there, and every week they played... Like they obviously played like all the regular movies, but they had one theater that was dedicated to old movies. Old school movies. So every week they would run one movie for like the full week. And it was, <clears throat> it was dope because it was like the original Prince. So mm. it wasn't like the remastered or anything oh, like that. Wow. So I, we, I used, I went and got to see like a lot of old, I went and saw Jurassic Park. Oh, that'd be a good one to go in see. Like the original, yeah. In like the original Jurassic Park. Um, there's like a bunch of shots where there's like boom bowls and like dudes oh, in the background and stuff. Wow. Cause like they just didn't, it, yeah. you know, they were just putting it out back then. So it was pretty funny to like see a lot of okay. that stuff. Um, but like saw like that and Jaws and a lot of like the yeah, classics, yeah. E.T., yeah. all that. Oh, but they yeah. had put all, they, the, all that stuff. I mean, and you can still see that stuff in theaters. They put that back in theaters on a pretty consistent basis, but they would have all that, like all that kind of stuff was always playing there. That's, and that's, that's interesting. So I'm going to ask you a question. So what movie, for, I think we talked about this before and I've asked you this before. What movie for you did you see that changed your perspective on 
watching movies. Like I felt like we used to like see movies and oh, there's a movie, it's fun. Yeah. But then there's a there is a switch from like child to adult when you're like, I'm watching this as an art. Mm. Um, yeah, probably I mean, I was probably pretty young. Um Jurassic Park was probably like the first thing that really landed with me in an impactful way. I saw that in the theater like a ton of times as a kid. Yeah. My mom would take me to see that a lot. Um, Jaws was really big for me. I watched that again super young, and that was like just such an adventure kind of movie yeah, for me. Like yeah, it really yeah. just kind of always hooked me in. Um, there was a lot of the classics like Disney ones, like Beauty and the Beast was big for me. Lion King was big. Um, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones was a that was, was a big. good one. Yeah, uh, I liked Goonies and like ET. All those. you saw Goonies in the theaters? Uh, oh no, I, I mean also yeah. No, I just not, said, I, I said I, movies. I've, I've I didn't seen, say theaters. Yeah, yeah. I've not seen Goonies in the theaters. Um, but I remember those movies having like that was like the time that like age range where those were like pretty relevant i think yeah that's kind of when i was peak influenced by movies i think where you could like like, differentiate like this is this is an art form yeah that was like like, the part where like i really got into it like i wanted like the toys and the books and i wanted to mm -hmm. like learn more about it and i bought like at that age, it's funny. I'm, my parents just actually gave me a box of this stuff. You but, said this uh, the other day. Your parents gave you a bunch to like get your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they gave, but I got a box of stuff the other day uh, from them. But when I was like younger, like I wanted, like I, I know, like a lot of kids probably wanted like books that like continued the, the story, the story, yeah. and the lore. But I wanted books on like the making of. Yeah, so like BCSL, I had a lot yeah, of like behind yeah. the scenes books on yeah. like how they did. Stuff. Yeah, so I had a lot of, like. Stuff from like Jurassic Park on that and like all that kind of stuff. I was into that stuff. That stuff. But okay. Th- right. Those were probably like the types of movies, like real young Spielberg kind of kid. Like that's just what it was. All right. Okay. More or less. For me, I think it was uh it was a uh, a beautiful mind. I was like way too young to like Oh really? Yeah. I was yeah, I was too young. That's a weird one. It's I I uh that's, you're young, but not that's not that old. What no. year did Beautiful Mind come out? What, what, what year was that? That was Russell Crowe, right? Yeah, but it was also the first time I got to really Where he was under putting the things up a wall. Two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was. Yeah, you were. Yeah, I was. I was a 12, teenager. 13, 14, I, yeah, I was like a teenager. That. So, but it, it was the you're first older. time I went to 17. see. I went to see a movie. Oh, you're older than me, then. Yeah, I by went to see it, years. and I was like, I I really was taken back by a movie. Yeah, that's the first time I was like a movie relayed a message yeah. and I understood the message mm-hmm. versus watching it and just being like, Oh, that was fun. Um, well, yeah, it was a beautiful mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would, from that perspective, I remember of being like, cause I was a kid, like I was really young when I was watching Jurassic Park and Jaws and I started seeing those as like, these are like really cool things. As far as like starting to unpack some of like the deeper mm-hmm. like concepts, Probably like Unbreakable or something mm, like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remember seeing that movie and just being like, man, like there's so much more to this comic book. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, there's I so think. much more to this. <laughs> <laughs> there's more. There's, I, I need to know more. Yeah. That's that's when like I <clears throat> yeah. saw that movie. I was like, I need to know more. Like, who was that guy? What was going on? Like, I needed to watch the movie again. Like, and to, to like really understand and like look for certain things that I didn't see the first time. Yeah. So for me, that like that that instance was a beautiful mind, mm. which is Russell Crowe. All and, right. Uh, who is that guy? Who's the guy that plays the weird hallucination cop? Uh, that was a agent. while ago, dude. I saw that in theaters, but I don't know if I've seen it since. Mm. No. Um, That's yeah. an oldie. That is oldie but goodie. And he, he followed I, – I think he did Gladiator first, and he followed up with that. He was on a run. Oh, right? dude, Gladiator, that's a classic. Yeah, he was on a crazy that tear. Movie, that yeah. movie still hits. Yeah, I love Gladiator. Yeah, uh, is there anything one. else on the list? Or does that wrap it up? Uh, that wraps it up, but you got your guys' watch yeah, list. My watch list is weird. I uh, watched uh, – Mine too. Uh, the, the Longest Breath. Oh, I started that. Yeah. I started that on a plane. So and weird. And because it's subtitles, 
I was like, I don't want to read this on my phone. So weird. So I like uh, bowed out. I watched like 20 minutes of it. And then I was like getting fatigued trying to like really yeah, read keep on my up with phone. It. So I was like, I'm going to do uh, this later. The premise is about free divers. Yes. And like how far down they, they can, can dive. And it's sad because these people are like really like killing themselves. Yes. Like they are, how long can I hold my breath and swim to the deepest depths of the ocean? And then, you know, yeah, as- ascend yeah. back up. Man. I got I got sucked. I had too much to drink it's and I was awful. watching. I got sucked in. And it's awful. Like this whole movie is just a sad awful. story of people dying because they can't get back up to the top. Like awful. I don't know why I did that to myself. But it was it was good too. Um, it was great. <laughs> it was really it was great. Great. <laughs> we say what did we say last week? Awfully it was, good it was or something. Awfully great. Yeah. Awfully great. Oh yeah. Telemarketers. Uh, telemarketers. I, I got through the first one, bro. Telemarketers. <laughs> Yo, it's, I told you. It's amazing because we've I all had a job like that in like the early two thousands. Whether it was really brief, you lasted years like this guy did, but before like the internet and like social media and like everyone had a camera on their phone. There were environments that were super sketch. Yeah. And like, there was no read, like where were, where was HR? Like what's going on here? Like this dude was like snorting heroin and like going back to work. And then as an adult, it makes you kind of look in retrospect to like, I, all of the things that this guy was doing, you're like, I definitely worked with somebody like that before. Like he was, and he was definitely doing heroin. I just had no clue. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This, <clears throat> this, this movie solidified it for me. But, yo, know, telemarketers is great. Like, I, I can't wait to get, to jump into part two, but I finished part one and I'm, I'm sold, man. Like Hell that, yeah. it's a great way to, kind of tell a story and could because there's no uh narration mm. all of the narration is done with the the videos and mm-hmm. and the stuff that he's submitted Interesting. like well no that's not true because the, the, he does interview a few of the people yeah he interviews a few of the people that he worked with but it's not done in a way where they're like drinking. They're like it's yeah. not done in a way where it's buttoned up. Like okay, we're doing yeah, a document. Yeah. Like this is like, dude, you worked with me. What was your experience? That's like? what it's like. That's why I, that yeah, because these yeah. people are bad and they need to be exposed. Yeah, we're not trying to make this the most professional thing. We're trying to get the information out there. So like he found who he could hour, found that was like still alive yeah. and functional mm-hmm. because wait till you get to episode. You. Yeah, man, I can't wait. I'll probably watch that tonight. Oh yeah. But did did you watch the? F- I've not started it yet. Oh, bro. <clears throat> I've been meaning to. Heavy, um, bro. Heavy. I almost got into it today, but I didn't want to like. I wanted to spend some dedicated time with it. Like I wanted to be able to focus on it. So it's fun. It's I, very fun. I held back. Um, it's uh because I mean you and I are around the same age. You would you would definitely. I was too, I was too yeah. young for this. But this like, was the, they marketed like these type of jobs for us in college. Like, yo, you can come work here. And I can't remember, there was one here in, in Baltimore that was like in Timonium. And it was a super large call center that was like giving out jobs yeah. to like Morgan yeah. students, Towson students, a bunch of my friends uh, from, from college that like worked there. And they were like... You know, like this place is just like nonsense. It's nonsense. You just mm-hmm. call people every day and try to get them to buy, like whatever, whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, very good, very good stuff. I hope um, the gentleman that like put it together is is like gonna you know get some type of like recognition, recognition. from it because it's it's. I mean, I would have never thought to even think to. You know, you 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 go to these jobs, you work in a crazy place, and like his first thought was like, "Yo, this place is crazy. I need to record every day." Oh. And he did that, mm-hmm. and now he's got a documentary on yeah. HBO. So, kudos to him. Good it's for him, man. Cool. Yeah. It's red. Yeah, um, I did the Shane Gillis uh, stand-up special on Netflix that came out this week. 
I Ooh. did Shane Gillis, comedian. Um, Doesn't track, but I will watch I it now. I love stand-ups. A, he's, there's a lot of viral clips of him, like on TikTok and Instagram with Chappelle. Um, he does, where he does like the Donald Trump <clears throat> impressions. Chappelle loves his Donald Trump impressions, so Chappelle will bring him up on stage <laughs> and do the Donald Trump impressions. I love that. They're pretty good. Um, did that. I did... There's a 90 day fiance. Obviously I'm like deep in and all that, but there's a 90 day fiance. Um, was like a, uh, it's kind of filmed like white Lotus style, but they're all going basically through therapy. It's like couples retreat. Oh remember the, remember the uh, movie couples retreat? Yeah. With, yeah. So it's that concept, but with 90 day fiance oh. couples. So they take a bunch of 90 day fiance couples and they put them in a couples retreat yeah. kind of thing. And they film it. So it's, it's, it's a much different format than the typical yeah. 90 Day Fiance thing, but I've been watching that. And then I watched on Netflix, they had a, um, there's a new series out. It's very, it's like a Pawn Stars kind of thing. Something golden. Um, G-O-L-D-I-N is the guy's last name. And he basically deals in memorabilia and sells memorabilia. He's like a big like mover mm. of like famous stuff. Um, Jake Paul's on the show, Drake's really? on the show, like a bunch of famous people. He, he like sells basically like tracks down the like most like exclusive memorabilia out there. So like there's the, um, the LeBron James, uh, triple man card. If you remember what that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So like a couple episodes, like they, they're tracking multiple things throughout the whole series, but he wants to he wants to buy and sell that card so like a part of the part of the series is him trying to track that card down so he flies up to toronto and does unboxings like drake bought like 15 sets of you know whatever those whatever yeah. the, whatever those cards were coming yeah. in those cases so he they do all the unboxings together and he's basically like he spends a bunch of the show like trying to track down this oh, this okay. triple man card i'll check that but, out but uh jake paul's on there and they're dealing he's a big uh card pokemon collector. Guy. Yeah, so yeah. They deal, they're dealing like you know they're dealing with like 10 million dollar pokemon cards yeah and they're doing unboxings of um Unboxings are obviously like a huge thing on like TikTok and like Instagram mm -hmm. reels and all Love that, like it. the big unboxings. But they get all of these Unbox original, of they think these original boxes of Pokemon cards that are like $350,000 a box. <sighs> And the whole, like the goal is they to just sit there and open them up, right? The and the they're card just looking for, Val like they're basically looking for Charizards. Like that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Those are the ones that are high dollar. Like they'll yeah. they'll pay for the box. But the the crazy thing is that every box <clears throat> that they open, every time they open one box, it makes all the other boxes more valuable. Yeah, because the because the, it's a finite it, amount. Yeah, yeah. It lose, the the others gain value because you've the taken one, one out of yes. cycle uh, yes. rotation. Yeah, so it's like it's that whole subculture, and it's like all of that like. It's, it's not, the production of it is not, it's, it's well made from the sense that like it's Netflix and they shoot it well. There's a lot of really bad, like scripted content, like where you can tell like they really like scripted scenes, um, or tried to like narrate or like, you know, kind of mm -hmm. play out scenes, which is not great. I wish it was a little bit more organic, but it is really cool to see how like some of these things get moved around. Like there are jerseys that are selling for like you know, $750,000 and like they're, they're basically like tracking all of this crap down Ugh. and trying to find it. And then they try to sell it. And it's like the whole world behind that. It's pretty rad to like kind of see mm. it. It's also insane that people are out there like Yo, collector moving, col collector moving cards and stuff. That's that expensive. It collector culture is absolutely insane. It's insane. So that's exactly what this is. It's, it's kind of in the vein of Pawn Stars, but like more expanded. Yeah. yeah with and celebrities and, and stuff. And specifically yeah. like memorabilia and collectibles and stuff like that. Uh, um, yeah. You know, you know, I'm a collector. Yeah. yeah. What do you got? I, you know, I collect like cards and well, comics. Well, this and, then this is right up your alley. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch this. This is thing. like if Absolutely. you're into cards at all, yeah. they're huge into cards. I'm definitely gonna watch. They this. do the card thing. Big I have an time. entire suitcase so, full of cards that yeah. I want to. I want to get rid of, but I want to. Do, I want to category them. Baseball and, cards, yeah, Pokemon, all that, all basketball, uh, soccer, NASCAR. Like they do all of it, and they're finding like. These guys are going after 
like the rarest of rare cards, like one of one. Honestly, I have so much you don't even know was like valuable until you actually mm-hmm. go through it and you're like get you get the get the the, the get the Gepi book and like yeah go through it and like tag it tag all your stuff. But like one of the the more recent things that I've got that's worth a couple dollars is um over the pandemic um there was a batman comic that released in three parts mm-hmm. and uh in one of the issues um batman like has like a come to jesus moment and like walks away from the bat suit but as he's in the panel as he's walking the illustrator like drew his dick oh damn <laughs> literally it's batman's like his physique and like his dick as he's walking through like walking towards the And the that's pen. your prized possession? Yes, Batman's dick. So th- let me tell you why, right? So apparently there was some backlash to DC about Batman's dick. Batman's uh appendage. And that's weird. I feel like it I feel like that's the one character you could do that with. And then they they pulled all of them from the shelves. Oh, uh, so you have one of them. Re, reprinted it. Now his dick's not in it. Mm. I saw this <clears throat> one day and I was like, Is that trying to I was it? like, let me, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Damn, dude. <laughs> I was like, let this, me, uh, <laughs> you should call these guys up. You can send your stuff in and commission yes. it and they'll sell it. So I was like, let me go look at my Batman's dick pause and see if. <laughs> I have it, right? Yeah. And I opened it and sure it was like a movie. Like, you know, when you open a book and it gold, like the yeah. light flat. I was like, wow, there it Dude. is. And then I went online Get and I it looked and, it was and worth, it's worth a couple bucks. And I have all three. So I have the first prints of Batman's. Um, Batman Uncensored. Batman could be, Uncensored. Could be worth something. Could be worth a couple bucks, yeah. Before we get out of here. <clears throat> ben Holiday. Ben Holiday. Let's talk about it real quick. How do you guys feel? I enjoy it. I want some more, actually. Yeah, it's it's uh, very full of flavor. Uh, the proof is uh, what's the proof on this? Hundred, hundred proof, which is I like a lesser proof. I'm more of like a you're like an eighty guy. Yeah, I'm I'm not heavy on the on the proof, but the taste is is is, is very good. Um, this wouldn't be like a after work drink for me this is like this does not taste this is like a whiskey of today this is a poker night it tastes i like it i like the taste of it yeah. i would say with a little bit of ice probably yeah that's where the, it it primes you really well so when i was first drinking it <laughs> it's made you I red felt you're like, red now because uh, <laughs> it's a hundred proof so i kind of felt like mm, this might yeah. be a little much so the first glass that i did a little bit of ice smoothed it out for me and now i'm doing well with it just neat it tastes good it's probably i don't i don't want to say it's overpriced it's on the high end though it was what you 65 yeah so it is good it's unique i i mean i don't know shout out to jay he it's still hard, gave me it's gave hard me 25 percent off hard to find this like yeah. it's not this is not gonna be the kind of thing you're gonna come across often he said it was special and yes. I, I do think that I think it is special for the fact that one, it's from Missouri. Two, it's a it's a true bottled and bond. Yes. Yeah. For the yeah yeah yes. it's, it's a true bottled. It's, it's like a getting a pair. Thing. Yeah. It's a unique. It's a thing. unique. Yeah. And I'm probably because won't drink anymore of that, until. it's probably worth it because it, this is one of those bottles that I would say because it is kind of unique, kind of makes up for the price difference. Otherwise, I would say it's probably like a fifty. Fifty dollar bottle, fifty like in that range. Yeah, but the fifteen bucks, it it is kind of a cool thing. It's not something you know anybody else is going to bring to a party. They, nobody's going to have this. Correct. Yeah, Correct. which I'm probably. And it tastes good. It's not like it's bad. It's it's good. I wouldn't feel bad spending that on it. I just, I could find other comparable bottles yeah. at the fifty dollar price mark. <clears throat> yeah, so. I I will probably not drink any more of this. I'd probably just put this on the shelf. And yeah. Special occasions. But, but it's good and it's fun yeah. to have. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so how uh, can you do a a, um, a Google and like where we can get it? 
Because if it's like one of those things where it's like this isn't available, like at a total wine or whatever, I'm definitely not gonna drink anymore. Come up, bud. Come but um what else we got? I know where you can get it. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of it. That's that's the end of the show. We'll figure out if it's widely available and then we'll get out of here. We'll duck out of here. We've been talking for an hour and fifteen, so Yeah, I mean last show was short. We gotta give them yeah. Well, we spent the first 15 minutes fumbling through your fantasy draft, so we had to make up for it. <clears throat> I, I basically said, fuck those guys. Uh, love you guys. I said, fuck those guys. But they're texting me now like you're going to go 0 and 15 because the auto draft just killed me. I'll figure it out. God is always on my side during fantasy there football go, season. I, I don't you know, know what to tell you. I don't even know how Do you it works. play fantasy football? No, I don't. I have too Dude. much going on in my life. I don't need to monitor Fantasy football leagues. You got to be a GM, bro. <clears throat> okay. So this uh, bourbon specifically only really goes to boutique yeah. liquor stores? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, the so they have another one. It's their uh, red wheat whiskey. Uh -huh. That's available at Total, but not at all Totals. It's not av available at so any of our local this ones. is like a limited release. Yeah. yeah. This is a it's, yeah. a, it's a good bottle. All right. Well, thanks, Jay. We got a limited. Uh, yeah. It's pretty solid. Yeah. I, might, I might grab myself one as well. This was fun.